Stop 1. Introduction. The content for this audio tour was selected from an essay titled Displaced Persons by Kiku Adato. Kiku Adato is the author of Picture Perfect, Life in the Age of the Photo Op, and is a lecturer in social studies at Harvard University. In Samuel Bach's art, the marks of trauma are everywhere in nature, on human beings, and on the objects of human making. The people who populate box paintings are the displaced, the dismembered, the refugee, and the wanderer. Bach reveals what is often concealed, the inner life of the survivor. Through a rich array of metaphors, Bach makes visible the hidden transcript of trauma, how war, genocide, and terrorism inscribe themselves on the human body in severed, amputated, and prosthetic limbs, in burned and hollowed-out faces, in embedded bullets and shrapnel, in horrors that haunt the inner life, in shards that sear the soul. He inventively reconfigures the human body in damaged metal, broken stone, discarded wood, and reconstructed debris, sometimes as figures set against a radiant sky and distant landscape, other times as haunting parts of a still life. Even when Bach portrays displaced persons as whole and intact, they are figures in a profoundly broken world. Stop 2. Resurgence. BK 1258. Resurgence is a fitting overture to Bach's new work. The painting is in the form of a religious triptych, but the rising up that Bach depicts is not a resurrection. The center panel features not religious figures, but giant pears in the shape of military bunkers. The reversal of form goes beyond you pending the divine order. In resurgence, the natural world is denatured. The yellow skin of the pear looks like a form of camouflage that is peeling away like paint. The sensual curves of the pear, so evocative of the female body, assume the form of hard blue metallic structures. The blue of the pears is an eerie reflection of the blue sky and the blue sphere of the earth. The pears carry the memory of the natural world, but they are now weapons of war and bearers of war's wounds, scars, and debris. The title of the painting is also a play on the idea of a military surge. In this abandoned outpost, the guns jutting out from the pillbox pears are silent. There is no surge, no push towards victory. The masters of war, the perpetrators of the violence, are nowhere to be seen. Their presence is felt only in the destruction they have wrought. In the wake of war, who rises up? In resurgence, the figures in Bach's parable are the dismembered and displaced. On the right panel, a refugee carries a giant map imprinted with an outsized pear that seems to grow from a tear. The map and pear are mottled and marred, marked by war's injuries echoing the crumbling, rusting pillbox pears. The refugee is on the move, but his eyes are cast downward, almost reverentially, at a green, perfectly formed pear he holds in his open palm. Typical of box paintings, unblemished nature is either represented on a small scale or at a distance, in the luminous skies and pastoral landscapes that form a backdrop to trauma wrought by human hands. Another motif in resurgence replicated in many of Bach's paintings, is the tension between wholeness and brokenness, moving and being stuck. On the left panel of Resurgence, three broken figures provide an ironic counterpoint to the refugee with the map and pair, mirroring and mimicking his gestures. A man obscured behind a tree replicates the hand holding the perfect pair, but with a bare, open palm. Behind him stalks a blue figure made of broken stone. Bolted and roped to the tree, the upper body of a man made of blue metal with a metal mask points his finger in the direction of the refugee, like a woebegone version of Michelangelo's Adam. Stop 3. Latest News. BK 1291. In latest news, we see a set of stacked, incongruous figures in the midst of mayhem. The flames of war color the horizon. Guns jut into the frame, and what appear to be cannonballs or mines litter the landscape. The painting's title is ironic on many levels. The figures are buried in the news, but oblivious to the destruction around them. 
The newspapers have no writing on them and look like ancient parchment. The latest news does not equip them to see the world or to act on their own behalf. A figure resembling a prophet with long white hair and raised arms is dwarfed by a man wearing a suit and tie, holding a newspaper at arm's length. The newspaper reader is a picture of brokenness. The arm that holds the newspaper is severed at the shoulder like a broken statue. His face is a papered over image that looks like a newspaper photograph or poster. A younger man, buried in the rubble of cast off newspapers, tugs at the suit jacket of the newspaper reader. His arm too is severed. Is it news that those who will be swept up in the winds of war do not see it coming, no matter how many newspapers they read, no matter how many prophets warn them? And what about the modern reader in the age of 24-7 cable news and the Internet? Does the barrage of news prepare us to see and act more knowledgeably, or is it as evanescent as the flying newspapers that merge into rubble in box paintings? Stop 4. Historian, BK 1263. In the historian, a towering stack of books in the background is on fire. In the foreground, we see giant, war-torn leaves from a tree of mythological proportions. One leaf is aflame, strung up like a sacrificial victim or burnt offering. The leaf has the sensuous green and gold shape of one of box pears and the curves of a bird's wings. Another giant leaf, shaped like a cradle, is suspended by pulleys in front of the historian perhaps the empty remnant of the cradle of knowledge. In this phantasmagoric landscape, the historian stands before us in his brown suit and red tie with a woeful look. What does he write when the world is in flames? One hand holds the base of the giant burning leaf. The other hand is in his pocket. One foot is in a bucket of a sprig of a tree. The other foot stands shoeless on a small stack of books. The historian, too, is a refugee. He bears witness to the trauma, yet is immobilized by it. Stop 5. The Art of Reading, BK 1292. The art of reading brings out another aspect of the reader as refugee. While the books burn in the distance, the reader keeps on reading, a solitary figure sheltered and protected in a makeshift refugee camp whose only other occupants are books. Like many of Bach's refugees, the reader is missing a shoe on one foot. But this detail is not what strikes our eye. It is the curve of his body, his complete concentration as he gives himself over to his reading. The world is burning, but the reader, absorbed in his book, inhabits a different world. In the distance, blue tents peel back from books stacked up like rock formations in an apocalyptic landscape. Near the reader, a blue tent partially covers a pile of books reduced to rubble. But there is something magnificent about the reader sheltered with his books. In the reader's tent, the books are intact and neatly stacked. Here books and reader have found shelter, if not a home. The art of the reader is the art of the survivor to improvise, to find a place for oneself in a broken world. Stop 6. Introspection, BK 1279, and Self-Questioning, BK 1276. The scope of human agency is an open question for Bach, because the brokenness he depicts is so far-reaching. Introspection and self-questioning bring the sense of displacement and effacement into the interior realms of the psyche. With these paintings, Bach poses existential questions about the masks we present to the world and the inner ruptures we hide from view. In introspection, an angel with metal wings and a hollowed-out face sits in a chair contemplating a mask that dangles from a rope in the shape of a question mark. Self-questioning is an ironic take on a child's jack-in-the-box. The upper body of a faceless man pops out of a tattered cardboard box and contemplates a mask affixed with a metal rod. The man's hand floats in space, and his thumb and forefinger stroke an absent chin. 
The wall behind the figure, like most of Bach's walls in this series of paintings, is riddled with bullet holes. The line between inside and outside, nature and artifice, animate and inanimate, is blurred. Bach's paintings suggest that ours is the age of the refugee, but that displacement is part of the human condition. To be human is to recognize the fractures and fissures in the world in which we live. Stop 7. Messenger. BK 1298. Bach is a master chronicler of rupture and metamorphosis. Human agency is responsible for the brokenness depicted in his paintings, but it is also what holds the world together. The refugee binds things together with rope, staples, wood, metal, using familiar things in unfamiliar ways. He makes his way in a fractured world. But box refugees are also adrift, seeking asylum but finding no safe haven. Messenger, like many of box paintings, presents the paradoxes of the refugee's plight with wry humor. Is the messenger, the man in the giant bottle with a curved leaf forming a sail, liberated when the top of the bottle breaks and he reaches his hand out, or is he on the verge of drowning in the sea? Will the messenger and the bottle be reborn from the brokenness or doomed by it?